So I'm going to show you an alternative way of assessing the distal part of the biceps uh, through a medial approach. So we start on the medial side, you go forward into the forearm, and the first thing to identify is the uh, radial head with the articular cartilage on top. You continue to go distally, and then you look out for the artery, and the tendon that is just deep to it. And then once you have that, you line up the picture, and you can see the insertion on the radius quite nicely there. Um, once you have that picture, you can go slightly more proximal, and that's more the, the long head of the biceps, or you can go distally, which is more the, the short head of the biceps. So sweep through it slowly, and the last thing might be that you want to do a dynamic test, which is pro and supination, to see how it behaves dynamically. To assess the medial elbow, it's quite nice to have the patient in um, side lying, which means we can assess what we need to and there's good access. If we pop our finger onto the medial epicondyl and just pop our probe, one end of the probe, onto the elbow, onto that medial epicondyl, and then if we point the other end of the probe up towards the thumb, then we can see the common flexor tendon attachment onto the medial epicondyle and you can see it there with the intramuscular tendon. If we then fishtail this end of the probe towards the little finger, keeping the probe on the um, other end of the probe onto the epicondyle, we can actually see the ulnar collateral ligament just there. And we try and line those fibers up and that's the ulnar collateral ligament. You can see the joint underneath and it's worth scanning through to see if there's any joint fluid, which we have there, uh, which can track underneath the ulnar collateral ligament. We can carry out, there's a very nice position just to carry out the stress test. So all we need to do is to apply a bit of stress onto the joint, so that's a valgus stress, and you shouldn't see the joint open up, just like in this example here. Then what we're gonna look at is the ulnar nerve. I actually like to pick up the ulnar nerve just above the medial epicondyle, so we're in transverse now. We must make sure that we toggle the probe and we see the ulnar nerve there uh, just next to the triceps. If we follow the ulnar nerve down into the tunnel, you can see the ulnar nerve over the top, you can see the Osborne's ligament, and you've got the medial epicondyle on the medial side, and on the lateral side, you've got the olecranon. Now, to carry out a maneuver to see if there's any subluxation, it's really important to keep the medial epicondyle in view, so keep that mountain high. And what we do is we go into full extension, and you can see there that we've got to keep that mountain up as we go into full extension and then we go and you can see the ligament over the top then we go into full flexion keeping the mountain high and seeing whether or not that rides up which you can see in this case it doesn't do too much and then as we follow it down you can follow it down until you see the two heads of flexor carpi ulnaris and you can see the nerve in between the two heads trying to look at that internal structure and then obviously we can just follow that nerve all the way down it's good practice keeping it in the middle as we go all the way down into the wrist into what we know as Guillaume's canal which obviously is another region for entrapment which will be just next to pisiform there and that's Guillaume's canal. Now we're gonna have a look at the posterior interosseous nerve and we're gonna find the radial nerve, first of all, by going to the anterior elbow. We can see the biceps tendon at the top. And as we come down, we get a really nice view, transverse view 
of the elbow joint with the articular cartilage. If we move medially, first of all, you can see the median nerve, which sits in the fascial plane um, between the pronator teres and the brachialis. If we move more radially, again, in that fascial plane, we can see the radial nerve, and we can obviously follow that up a little bit further as well. On the um, lateral side, we see brachiae radialis, and on the medial side, again, in the center, we've got brachialis. If we follow the nerve down, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow it as it goes, we're just gonna put a little bit of pronation onto the forearm, and we're gonna follow it down until we go to the top of the supinator. Now, you can see where the nerve splits and then goes onto the, through the arcade of Froch, and we need to keep that nice and transverse. You can actually see in this case, it does get a little bit thicker just as it goes through the arcade of Froch there. As we go more distal, and as Daniel said, it's really important to follow it all the way down, we then can see it between the two heads of supinator, the deep and the superficial heads. And then we must follow it all the way down until it comes out the other side. And you can see there, even as you come distally, there is a site of entrapment there. So if we follow it back up proximally, you can follow the nerve all the way, look for any atrophy in the deep and superficial heads. And specifically, we're concentrating around that arcade of Froch, but remember, it's not always at that point where you get the entrapment. As Daniel said, these are pretty rare. We can have a look at the nerve also in longitudinal sections. So again, if we follow it down, see where it splits, and just as it starts to go through the arcade of Froch, which is there, we can actually spin on that nerve, which obviously is quite tricky. Um, to do, but we can see the nerve in long section. Now, to see if there is any kinking of the nerve, as Daniel said, we can use resisted supination. So you just ask your patient to just resist supination and hold it a bit harder. And you can see a little bit of kinking on the nerve there and then relax. And we just line it up and again. Good, and relax. And just one more big contraction and we line up, you see there's a little bit of kinking on that nerve, and this nerve is slightly bigger as it goes through the arcade of Froch. Daniel um, went over the details of the lateral elbow and I'd just like to give you a few pointers of how to assess it yourself using a few landmarks. So we start in cross section um, and we just orientate ourselves with the landmarks that are now in view, which is cross section of the radius, on top of that the supinator and on top of that you get the tendon of the ECRB, which we normally refer to as scorpion steel, which is there. On the more anterior part, we've got the belly of the ECRB, and if we go further anterior, the ECRL. And you can see if I move it slowly, there's two compartments indeed between the two muscles. So now we go back to the scorpion steel there. It's a cross section of the ECRB tendon, and then we move it proximal, follow it to the insertion. And there it comes onto the insertion. Now, to do then longitudinal, so now we're going to go have a view on it longitudinal over the joint. We see the radial head and the footprint of the tendon. And then the ligament is the deep part, the RCL is the deep part of the tendon there. If we from this position move laterally, then we should see the common tendon, extensor tendon in, in our view there. And again, the deep part of that is the RCL, blending in with the uh, annular ligament on top of the radius there.
So we're going to follow the medial nerve from proximal to distal, just to trace the nerve. Um, and we're going to start here, quite proximal on the upper arm, identify it next to the blood vessel. And once you've got your eye on it, let's see if we can trace it. There it goes. Slowly follow it down towards the elbow. And then there's the level of the biceps there on the left side of the picture. And as soon as we are here, it will start to move into the pronator fascia, which is coming up there. And you can actually work it a bit harder with your probe to make sure that you can see the internal echoes of the nerve and the fascial plane, because if you do it this way, it does all disappear a little bit. So do adjust where necessary. I'll keep it nice and bright for now so you can see the fascial, fascial tissue as well as the nerve here deep to the pronator and now it comes out of that fascial plane. Again, at any point, stop for a moment and work and see if you can make that internal echo of the nerve really quite detailed. And then we just keep following it up further into the forearm. Again, in a, when it's not in the fascial plane, you have to work it a bit harder if you want to make it stand out because the muscle fibers around it make that a little bit more difficult to see. And here the fascial plane gets a little bit more pronounced and the nerve becomes a little bit easier to follow. And now we're getting close to the uh, wrist and you can see the nerve moving up superficially. Also to point out deep to that is the uh, pronate quadratus. So if we stay to the nerve and we're going to go up and it works its way into the carpal tunnel. So if I just move it a little higher, so we want to make sure that we've got at that point both the bony landmarks um, on the side scaphoid. On the one side that's the ulna side there. And then there's your Guillaume's canal there. There's your nerve under the transverse ligament, quite visible as a, a nice structure. Again, angle it, work it a bit, make sure you have a good view on that, as well as the uh, ligament on top and all the other structures surrounding it.